Right, welcome back. This is our third video in our Canvas course design series. So in our last two videos, we talked a little bit about course design and planning before um, we started building. Then in the last video, we talked about how to build this beautiful homepage that's simple and clean uh, for our students. And we also worked on our course navigation, cleaning that up. Um, now for this um, video, we're going to be looking at modules and building content pages. So as a quick recap, we are going to be looking at this course content um, criteria here on our course evaluation checklist. So of course, we're going to be making sure we follow copyright law. Um, we're going to be making sure our links are active and working. And then we're also going to be doing some of these other things here. I know I said for the video series, we were really working on foundational skills, but um, there's some easy ways just to go ahead and get some of these other um, one star and two star um, things uh, taken care of while we're building out um, as a result of our good course design. All right, so uh, for that course design, we're going to be using our course design template here that I've built out. It has our standards, our learning outcomes, and then it's kind of sketched out the module that we're going to be building together today. So we're going to go back to our course. And we're going to click on that modules view and we're going to go ahead and click on plus module and we're going to make our first module and so um, i always uh, suggest um, putting you know weeks or units or um, however you want to organize it but you know have um, a different module for each week um, it seems to work really well um, for students. Uh, so and it also helps observers as well if they know, hey, this is the module. So I'm going to go over to my course map and I'm just going to call this, I'm going to copy and paste because my unit title is going to go right in. And so I'm going to call this um, unit one. Okay. And notice you can lock modules. So if you were wanting to work ahead, um, you can lock them or you can also just keep them unpublished. If you don't publish a module, the students can't see it. So that way you can always be working ahead uh, on the next module. So I'm gonna say add module and notice that it's not published. So I students can't see this right now until I click on that publish button. And then I'm gonna take a second using the plus button to go ahead and add all of the things that I listed out in my course template, right? So first thing I have is an introduction page. So I'm gonna go down here to page and I'm gonna add a new page. I'm gonna call it um, introduction. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about adding content or anything to these pages just now. I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch out everything that's on my um, course planning for my module. So I've got um, a Quizlet activity that I'm going to add another page. And then next we're going to have some content. Um, I've got, I'm going to need two pages for this because I'm going to do um, an external um, URL. And so um, that is a website that I want uh, students to read about. And so I'm going to take this link here and put it in here. And so um, you can uh, check this box, load in a new tab if you want it to load separately, but I actually like loading websites right within the Canvas course so that way students aren't um, visiting out. Sometimes it doesn't work with every website. Some websites you do have to load in a new tab, um, but most of them will load just fine right there. And then next we're going to have our content page. Um, so I'm just going to call this that. And I also wanted to make sure to do a discussion board so that way after um, students have explored some of this content, they have a way to discuss. So we're going to do a new discussion and we're going to call it, what did I call it in here? 
why does it matter? Okay, so now I have some blank pages and we are now gonna work on the process of building these out. Um, so I'm gonna use kind of the same steps that I did earlier. Um, first, we're gonna work on our introduction page, which is going to um, be our introduction to what the module is about. So give me just a second and I'm gonna populate some information and then I'll walk you through it. Okay, so I've gone in to our introduction page and I've copied and pasted from our um, course planning guide what our learning outcomes are, um, as well as I've made a table, um, which I'm gonna go back in to the editor mode to show you if you don't know how to put a table in on a content page, you click on the little snowman, that's the three dots, and then the table editor is right there. And it's very similar to like a Google doc where you just kind of draw in the table you want. And then um, you can go ahead and put your text in here. One thing I am going to do is I've listed out the different pages um, in each one of the, um, in the module. And so I'm gonna go in here to my links and instead of doing an external link, I'm gonna do a course link. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put in links to each one of these pages. Um, so that way, in order just to help the visibility and the navigation of the course, um, my students can either click on these uh, links or use the next buttons on the uh, module on the top of the page. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and do 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 do. The only one I won't be able to do is that um, page that's an external page because external links can't be um, linked into here. I could link out directly to that page again if I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and put all of those links in. And again, at the top of the page, I just used one of our um, generic dividers that I made at the beginning of the course. And then at the bottom of this page, I'm not quite done yet, I'm going to put in um, our divider that um, has our what's next because I always like to put those little last steps on the bottom um, so that way um, students know exactly what they need to be doing next. So I'm going to go back to my course images. I'm going to put that what's next in there. I'm going to click on it and make sure that the alt text is good. And there we go. And I'm going to go in to my HTML again because I want to make sure that that divider again scales to the width of the page. And I'm going to do this in a heading font or a heading format afterwards. Um, so what's next after this, um, I want them to go, uh, uh, use the next button, uh, to explore our, uh, module vocabulary on. Right. And then I'm going to click Save and Publish. And so now this introduction page is here. And so they have the next button at the bottom of the page, which is going to go to our next page, which is our Quizlet. Uh, so what I'm going to show now is how to, um, we're going to edit this page and it's going to be very simple. I've made a Quizlet um, deck that I'm going to open up and I'm going to copy the embed code on a Quizlet. So if you, at once you make your Quizlet deck, um, you click on the share button and then there's an embed code, which looks like a lot of um, gibberish and that's actually HTML. Uh, so I'm going to um, pull that up, copy and paste it. And we will see it right here.
So I'm going to copy. I'm going to go into that HTML. So just like I did for editing the length of the text. I'm going to put it right there. And now they have a Quizlet right there. And so I'm going to click on Save and Publish. And my Quizlet is right here. All right. So that's real easy to do. And now they can practice with matching the vocabulary. Right? Very simple to do. All right. So this page is good. Um, we can, if we wanted to, I can go back and when I edit down here at the bottom again, I can put my image for my course images. What's next? We add that at the bottom. I click on it to make sure the alt text is good. And using my header, um, click the next button uh, to explore our, um, or to, to learn more about pandemic quiz. Okay. So I have my directions there. I do need to go into HTML one more time to make sure I didn't do it. Let me go in my image options. Go and there we go. Make sure that looks good. Okay. Um, so at any point in time, you can also go out to your modules view and you can kind of see how we're working. Um, I'm just working with that next button. So with the pandemic flu, we're just going to click on it because remember, this is the external link. All right. And so here's that, here's that, how you know if the website can be embedded or not. And uh, so if I click on this link, it comes right up. Um, so what I need to do here is I need to go back to my module. And I need to go to that pandemic flu, click on the little snowman and click on edit. And I'm going to say load in a new tab. And now students won't see that um, refuse to connect button because what will happen is they'll have to, it'll open up in a new tab and they'll be able to read it. All right. So an important copyright point here. Um, this page here is mostly text. So you might be tempted to copy and paste this directly into your Canvas course. Um, just be aware that for copyright, that would be um, considered, you know, a copyright unless um, this resource has a um, Creative Commons license on it. If it had a Creative Commons license on it, you would be okay to copy and paste it directly into your course. Um, but just keep in mind that for copyright, the best thing to do, um, if you don't, unless you see that Creative Commons license on it, or it says on there that you're welcome to take and use the content, the safest thing is to always make sure you um, link it. Um, and even though this resource is probably okay because it's a government resource, um, most government resources are copyright free. Um, I just want to model the safest possible use, which is just loading it in an external site. And that's also helpful too, because you might have other resources um, that you want to add to your module. All right, so we've gone through, we've added um, an introduction page, we've done our Quizlet with embedding that, and then we've worked on our pandemic flu. The next thing we want to look at is our course here for um, pandemic response. And so I'm going to insert a couple of videos. So I'll do the first one here with you, and then I'm going to fast forward um, to the page being done. So we're going to start and I'm going to go into my tools tab and I'm going to be looking for YouTube. Uh, now, if you don't see YouTube, you might have to go into view all and see if your Canvas admin has enabled YouTube. So we're going to go in here. And we can either put the name of the video or if you already have it, the link to it, if you copy 
and paste that link to it. All right, so here's one video. And that's actually the second video I want. And I'm going to come up here and put a little bit of text, not a lot, and um, those two videos, and then I'll be right back. All right, so I've built out my pandemic response content page with the two videos. Um, so I've used our dividers again, just to kind of break up the content a bit. Um, you'll notice too, that in addition to embedding the YouTube videos, as I showed earlier, I also put the direct link. Um, this is helpful for students that might be on a mobile device or a different device if somehow the embedded video is not working, um, they can click on the direct link and it will open, um, for example, if they're on their phone, um, it'll, if they have the YouTube app, it will um, launch the video into the phone. A couple of things to note about our videos, um, for that accessibility piece, we're going to want to make sure that the, the videos first world war was among have um, closed captions, which you can see this video does with the CC um, feature there. Most videos on YouTube have closed captions, but you're just going to want to make sure that's always um, working and available. That's one of our accessibility features to check. Um, and so I've got my directions and then down at the bottom, I've got my what's next and we're going to go on and now talk about our discussion board. So in our discussion board, um, I've already gone ahead and set it up. So a discussion board, um, if you are not familiar with them, um, they are very easy to use. It's a lot like a content page. You can add your content. Um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and actually recorded a short video of myself giving directions. Um, students can respond to a discussion board with both video and written responses. Um, so it's a great thing to build community and make learning a little more personal if um, students can record themselves responding. Um, so I've given them the instructions on the video, but I also in a recap um, wrote it down there. I am going to go into the edit mode just to show you some of the options with discussion boards. So, um, of course, you put your content up here at the top. Um, we have our options down here where um, I've selected where they have to post before seeing replies. So we're sure we're getting their honest um, you know, thoughts. Um, you can make it graded, you can allow liking, um, and you can also sort responses by likes. So if you want to use a discussion board, maybe for problems and solutions, you could have students like the responses that they, um, or the solutions they think would work best. And then, um, you know, you have kind of that nice way of um, seeing what the discussions are. You can also do group discussions. So this module here is kind of an introduction to pandemics and epidemics. So maybe um, further in the module as I develop it out, I might would put another discussion board in there and make it a group one and assign students to a different pandemic or epidemic um, to discuss. And then we can have, you know, kind of, uh, kind of almost like doing stations, but virtually um, instead of doing, um, you know, stations in a face-to-face -face environment. So maybe have a group um, discuss smallpox and another one discuss, um, you know, malaria or AIDS or the bubonic plague so or COVID-19. Um, so you can definitely do group discussions. You can add points. You can also do complete or incomplete um, if you want to. You can also do peer reviews. Um, so I've done peer review discussion boards. That's really good if you're having like a big project or maybe an essay or something that they're writing and you want them to be able to kind of do a draft and propose um, what they are going to research or write about and then their peers can review them. Um, that's a really helpful tool as well. Um, but I did want to show that record media is up here under the little uh, play slash music icon. And so there's upload record media and students have this as well, where they can use their webcam. Hi. And uh, record in uh, to their video as well. All right. So I'm going to save. The next thing to do is just to make sure that we go back to our module and so, you know, we have gone over this kind of basic design principles. We've talked about introduction to a module. Um, we've gone through some content pages. We've embedded some tools. Um, I've shown you the external tool. We want to make sure everything is published and we want to go through it in student view one more time just to make sure the flow is correct. So notice now 
students have a modules uh, link on the course, right? And so we can go to that first page, um, our introduction, just making sure everything loads correctly, looks good. Um, everything looks good here. That's one more tool. All right, so we are gonna wrap it up with just um, a reflection of looking at our course evaluation checklist. So we've gone over course information in that first video um, and the first two videos and then course content in this video assessment of student learning. So by putting that what's next um, little descriptor on the bottom of every page, we're helping our students have detailed instructions so that way they understand what they're supposed to do. We also have a variety of assessments. So that Quizlet um, that I embedded could be one form of, of an assessment for learning. Um, another thing could be the discussion board. Um, you could certainly put in a quiz uh, further in this module. Um, so we are definitely covering those foundational skills. And then also I've talked about accessibility kind of throughout the video, um, but there is an accessibility checker that's built into um, every page that has that um, content page. So I'm going to leave student view and let's go into the pandemic response page. And we, we go into, back into edit mode. We're looking for this little um, person in a circle. That's the built-in accessibility checker. And you're looking for this screen right here. Woohoo, congrats, no accessibility issues were detected, right? Um, that means our images all have alt text, our videos, um, you know, have that closed captions. Um, there's no issues with our colors and fonts and contrast. If there were an issue on a page, it would come up and it would ask us how we wanted to fix it and actually guide us through fixing it on the page. So the accessibility checker is a great thing. I encourage you um, to use that on every page that has that content box, um, just so that way you know that there's no issues with any of your content. So this has been our basic introduction to course design. I hope it's been helpful. Um, next month, we'll take a little deeper spin on it and talk a little bit more about assessments and rubrics and some things, um, how to amp up um, your course once you have the basic course design um, that you're comfortable with. Thank you.